Hey folks, it's time for another Watch Me Work session. This time it's with Troy Miller. Troy is kind of the founder of Watch Me Work. This was his brainchild and his idea. In fact, we recorded session number one, or I will call it session zero, which was the screen test for this session a couple weeks ago. But he's back now to do a real version of Watch, Watch Me Work. We're gonna sit down and look over his shoulder as he pro post processes some images uh, according to his wedding workflow, as well as some personal personal images. We'll get a look at some of his software that he uses, as well as some little tips and tricks about how he kind of organizes his files and keeps himself, keeps himself on track. All right. All that's coming your way next. This is Twitter. All right, so lots of stuff to go through and a little bit of inside baseball. This is actually our second time recording this Watch Me Work session because, uh, you know, this is Watch Me Work, so I'll be transparent. My computer crashed and we lost the recording. <laughs> so, <laughs> it happens to everybody, you know, and I'm, what have I recorded? F what, 512 episodes of TWIP and still stuff like that happened. So There were ooh. so many good jokes, too, that I, I just can't remember now. Yeah, it's all the magic. The lightning in a bottle, man. It's gone. Now. It's gone. <laughs> but Troy Miller, man, welcome back to the Watch Me Work session. How you doing, man? I'm doing good. Thank you, sir. I'm 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 gl I'm very happy to be here. I'm glad we're doing it. Yeah, it's good to have you. It's good to have you. I mean, you know, I know exactly what you're going to talk about because I feel like I'm in a time loop. So, <laughs> so <laughs> and I have an advantage. I'm a time traveler and I'm in my time. Yeah. So uh, yeah. So let's let's dive into this. What what are some of the things you're going to show us today? Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh how I organize my photos and sort of keep me on track with my workflow. I'm going to show how I edit in Lightroom and how I handle my weddings and just kind of like my normal day to day when a job comes in, what the process is that that job kind of goes through. It's, you know, it's, it's unremarkable, but yet it's what I do on a regular basis. And uh, if you haven't done it before, it could be some good tips for you. You know, I would, ar I would argue that it's remarkable because uh, you, most people don't know what they don't know. And most people don't get the opportunity to look over the shoulder of a working pro that is way down the path of where of, on the road that they that they want to be on. Right. So looking over your shoulder and seeing some of the processes that you've put into place, I would say that's golden. Right. <laughs> because it's back well, to I the hope. old days. That's of the idea. Yeah, it's back to the old days of uh, apprenticeships and, you know, that kind of thing where you, you intern or apprentice until you can, you know, take over the ironworks yourself. So no, let's, that's uh, true. Yeah, let's, yeah. let's dive in, man. So uh, let's okay. uh, sc share your screen and I won't, you know, bore people with my yakking. I got the screen sharing on. All right. Here it is. Okay. Right. I see your desktop. Good deal. All right. So what we have here. Is this a failure is how... to communicate. <laughs> What's yeah? <laughs> what we have here is a failure to communicate. You don't remember that movie? <laughs> oh, it's just there's just delirium going on. It's gonna be like that. It's like, I know. Yeah. I know. I've just given up. I've given up to the uh, to the technology gods. We're we're kind of at their mercy today. <laughs> so. Yeah. So what this is here is this is very much my workflow and you can see that the folder is named a workflow mm -hmm. so when it when a job comes in and we'll just grab nick and brianna right here um when a job comes in i upload them right here now this is actually like a working folder and what i've done is i've created a background image and i'll show you that as soon as this copies over so that i can move it, the folders around within this space but i'm not actually moving them from folder to folder they're staying in the same root folder called workflow yeah and, and this is this just i want to hammer this home this piece home because we we talked about this a little bit before but this this is a golden nugget if people don't know that because what you're looking at right now it looks like a finder window oh i mean it is a finder window but it looks like a desktop and Right. Uh, there's aliases in there and folders strewn about, and what it's actually just a folder, right? We're just looking inside a folder. Yeah. So watch if I go into column view or go into whatever view this is, list view. It looks like just like a normal folder, but if you go into thumbnail view, and you make sure that your view options are set to arrange by none and sort by none, then wherever you put the folder in that window is where it stays forever 
which I which is which is brilliant for me. And then the background, you can just make that out of anything. So I made that one. And uh, what I did was I figured out how big I wanted this to be. I screen captured it, brought it into Photoshop, and then I mimicked that size. Mm. And then I, I made my background. So and I, I it's a PSD. So all I got to do is bring that into Photoshop and I can edit it anytime I want. That's great. That is a brilliant yeah. tip. That is just brilliant. Right there. So and I've I never have... used that. I've never, Troy, I can tell you, I think I've seen that in in options as, you know, one day when you're poking around looking at different things, but I've never thought to use the background of a folder for a production workflow usage like this. So that's brilliant. Yeah. Thank you. I love it. I love it. I have my shortcuts over here. So I know, you know, where the things are that I need to grab quickly. I move this down the line to show me what progress it's in. So if it's sitting here, that means I haven't copied it to my digital DVD. Back in the day, I used to burn DVDs to back up all my images, but <laughs> too many DVDs now. Yeah. Um, so that's a hard drive. Then I copy that and I give it to my wife on her hard drive. And then she takes that and she goes and does the editing and the calling and everything else, all the sorting. Um, and then, see, so when I put this up here, I know that she's editing it. So these jobs she has, and I'm waiting. I'm waiting for her to give them back to me. When she gives them back to me, then I move it down here. Actually, I delete the original here and I copy hers in, her version, which has a lot less files and they're sorted and everything. And then I take that and I'll put it in Lightroom. And I know so, we're going to get into it. So when you, when you say she gives them back to you, what is she giving back to you and what are you giving to her? Okay, so what I'll do is like, here's a here's a wedding folder right here. Mm -hmm. This is full of uh, wedding files. This is just a ton of, of files. And I give her that folder. And then what she does, she goes through and picks out the bad ones, gets rid of those, deletes them, puts the ones that she likes into the folders that are pertinent, like black and white, black and white soft, sepia, whatever. Once that's done, she gives me back that curated folder that folders finished okay mm -hmm. so then i delete this one because i don't need it anymore now obviously i have a backup um, of the original file so i'm not actually deleting the only copy and then i put her copy here and then i can virtually it'd be like okay i'm ready to edit nick and brianna yeah so i went from three thousand files down to 500 ish files and I'm, I'm ready to import into lightroom and go to work that's great. So the files that she gets are straight out of camera. She's not doing any editing. She's kind of doing a first pass or uh, culling and Correct. saying that, yeah, I think this this shot that we did of wine glasses toasting might make a good sepia shot. And she puts in a sepia folder. And then when you get that back, you're like, okay, she suggests this should be sepia. And you go ahead and process it accordingly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Great. See, that yep. what a team. Yep. Hey, what a team. Okay. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, it's it's really great. It's really great. And if you don't have a Margie to to do that for you, you should get one because it completely makes my job so much easier. I can be more creative and I'm not so stressed out about, um, you know, the calling through 3000 images. And she's very patient. And she does that. And she knows what the brides want as much or more than I do because she builds the albums with them. So when she's sitting there and she's going through, she's like, oh, yeah, yeah. And Brianna's going to love this shot because she knows Brianna better than I do because she's talks to her a thousand hours. So, cause we're very, we're very uh, hands on with our brides. So Margie talks to them all the time. So she knows. So you're, so you're the unsociable kind of <laughs> one that's antisocial running around taking pictures and she's the one engaging and getting the feel for the personality of the couple. So she knows, she knows what image should be what, right? Yeah, kind of on the shoot day, um, I'm a complete comedian. So uh, I, I'm definitely on stage and I'm the center of attention. So I like, I definitely control the flow. But yeah, that's that's very true. Yeah, she does know all that. So yeah, that's cool. Awesome. Yeah, you're so right. So before we jump into the editing, because to me, it, it plays into the into the workflow and how I do um, what I do. I want to show you what my desk looks like. And this is basically my overall desk. It's a standing desk because sitting for hours killed my back. Yeah. But you can see some of my tools that are here and I'll go into those in a little bit more detail. But I, I thought that, that would be really important that everybody understand that, you know, I'm not just working off a keyboard, that there's intention behind what I do. And I don't like to work. 
if it's if if it's if it's not fun or if it's not productive or if it's just sort of a doldrum, if it's a grind, mm -hmm. that's work. I don't want to do that. Yeah, I mean, so, it's, the, it's the old cliche: work smarter, not harder, right? Yeah, yeah, it is. It's very true. It's very true. Yeah. So, so what's what's on your desk there? So I see. Um, go back to that. Go oh, back. you want me to go back to the big image? Yeah, go back to the other shot. Okay. Okay, so I see I see a MacBook Pro. Yep. So is that yep. your main processing machine, or is there a monster machine somewhere else hidden I can't see? No, the MacBook Pro is just my secondary computer. This is my iMac. Um, oh, that's an iMac there. Okay, okay, got yeah, it. Yeah, my NEC. And then got right here my Shuttle Pro. I've got the pallet gear, which is the adjustable knobs. I've got my Stream Deck for when I finally get into doing my webinar podcasting stuff. Yeah. And uh, you got to have a, uh, a a Wacom tablet. If you don't have a Wacom tablet, then... Go home. You, I have yeah. one. Do, do I have to use it or do I... <laughs> yes, you have to use it. <laughs> okay. It means I got to charge it up and, and use that thing. Mine, yeah. I literally have had it for like, I don't know. It's got to be at least two years and I haven't oh. done anything substantive with it yet. You're just, yeah, you got to get over that. I know, yeah. I know. So the the Shuttle Pro is something that's really important to me, and, and that is, is, is I've programmed all these buttons on here to do different shortcuts and change exposures uh, with the dial as I work. I'll talk it through a little bit as I edit, but this is super, super, super fast, and I don't need to touch the keyboard. I don't need to look away from my screen at all. I'm only looking at the image. So this has been very helpful. They're not very expensive. Um, they're easy to configure. And then what is this one? This is so with with that thing. If most of your workflow is kind of pre-programmed into the Shuttle Pro guy, mm -hmm. if uh, you know a mischievous person sneak snuck into your office and snipped that cable, you uh, <laughs> you'd be what would you do? Go buy another one real quick? <laughs> yes, yeah, so, no, I have another one. I have a spare. <laughs> That's nice. I don't know the shortcut keys anymore. I'm like, um, what's the? You know, I'm on my laptop and I'm doing something in Photoshop, and I'm like. How the heck do I do I create another layer from a selection? I have no idea what the shortcut is. Uh, you know, yeah, it's on my it's on my tablet. So it's, I mean, it's on my uh, shuttle pro. Yeah, well, good. And that's good. just the the center shot there. And then here we go. So the tablet, you can see it's very well polished. It's very yeah. well used. Yeah, look at that. And that's one of the bigger ones too, right? This is medium. This is a medium one. Medium. Okay. Yeah. Cool. And look then, at all that uh, automation. You got a tablet. You got an array of dials. There's a, a stream deck with programmable buttons on it. There's a remote yeah. with buttons on it. So you're like you're 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 like uh what did I say before? You're like a DJ. That's what it reminds me of. Like <laughs> a DJ mixing Kirk the songs of your images. Right? <laughs> oh, you know a DJ would be fun. You know I do listen to EDM when I edit, so I do feel like this is kind of like you know my thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. Same stuff they use, I bet. <laughs> But the, the, the palette gear is really cool um, for that physical connection. It works really well with Lightroom. It's not super friendly with Capture One or other software. Mm -hmm. um, it's very tied into Lightroom. But I have like this first dial is contrast. This is warmth. This is hue. Uh, this is black and this is shadow. And then the next one is uh, white and highlights or highlights and whites. I don't remember. And then um, this is clarity and dehaze. Okay. And while I'm working on the tablet, I can just I can just reach up and grab that and and tweak the contrast or something a little bit, and it's really quick because I don't want to look away from the image to look over to the sliders to adjust the sliders to look back at the image. To me, it's mm -hmm. it's straining on the eyes. It's it's just too much. Yeah, I, I would imagine that you probably have a lot of muscle memory built up too after doing what over half a million images. <laughs> you're oh, just, yeah. Like you just kind of, your arm knows exactly where to go to get, to get a little clarity. Right. Well that too. And actually when I'm editing in Lightroom, I know where to click on the slider to give me what I want as opposed to sliding the slider and then seeing it happen. I just click on the slider and go, okay, this is where I want it to be. Mm -hmm. And it just pops in. You'll probably see me do that without explaining it when I get into editing Lightroom. Yeah. Okay. So let's, so what I would do here is I would just drag this down into my Lightroom icon and it's going to import. Now, here's a really cool trick. I import it minimal 
and I do smart previews. I build smart previews. So I'll hit import. Now here's the thing. If you go into Lightroom and you go to preferences and you turn on use smart previews instead of originals for editing under the performance tab, mm -hmm. Lightroom will use those smart previews to edit it. It'll render a preview, it basically generates a small DNG and Lightroom will be lightning fast compared to not. So, but just so that we're clear, so you're, you're editing, you're doing all your edits on a low resolution proxy and then it's creating a recipe or it's remembering what those edits are and then it's applying those to the raw file or does it do those real time? It's doing it in real time. Oh, okay. So it's applying it to the raw file one image at a time. So if you have a computer crash, <laughs> You're not going to lose all your edits up to that point. You might lose that last one, but right, uh, right, yeah. It's just, uh, it's just a, it, it really is a huge performance boost, and you'll see how fast it it pumps through these images. And the images I'm I'm editing are uh, D850 and Sony A7R Mark IIs, which are there are nearly 50 megapixels and D5 images. Oh, so they're they're all they're all pretty hefty images. But it's applying, just so I'm clear on this, it's applying your edits as you go to the raw file. So for example, if you brought yep. up a low resolution DNG proxy and you add some clarity to the eyes or whatever, um, and then you did a bunch of other things, it's not waiting until, until you leave that image to apply that those those changes to the raw file. It's doing them as you go or? Yeah, okay. but what it's, what it's showing you is a lower res version. Now I'm no expert. I'm no I'm no Adobe engineer, so I'm not exactly sure what all is happening under the hood. Yeah. But it's taking less rendering time. It's taking less horsepower. To zoom in one to one is quicker. Um, you know, it, 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 test it, test it, and see. But for me, oh my gosh, it's it saves me. It's got to save me forty minutes editing a wedding because wow. I I go faster than my computer can keep up. So, so it's, um, a, it's a real difference. It's not just a, you may feel a little bit. It's actually, you can really feel the difference then. Oh yeah. Yeah. Huh. I mean, I'm, I'm clicking on buttons and I'm not moving. And with the, the, the smart previews on, I click and it moves. I make an adjustment. I click and I move. Now are your, are your files stored on a local drive or, or are they elsewhere? My files are all stored on um, a Thunderbolt three Drobo that I have sitting under my desk. So it's an attached, physically attached drive that's pretty fast. Mm, okay, wow. And, all, and everything that you're editing is coming, is coming over Thunderbolt into the- Yes, okay. yeah, yeah. And that's a, it's a pretty fast drive. That's why one of the reasons I picked it, it's like six or 700 megs per second. Wow, okay, so, got it. Yeah, it's, it's moving out. It does me good, I'm happy with it. Let me clean off some of these little so there you go so that was 200 images brought in in two minutes i timed it so it's just it's just literally two minutes so if we pop into an image here and i go in to one to one there's no loading screen there's no waiting there's no nothing boom i'm in i'm out i can pop to the next image um, i can zoom in check focus i can zoom out it's you, you can't you can't do that if you render even if you render one to ones and you spend a day rendering one-to-ones on import it still isn't that fast yeah wow so so it's that's very crazy. impressive that's crazy and as you step through these this is is this about the speed that you'd be stepping through these images if this was a, a real production job um probably a little bit faster mm -hmm. because i won't be explaining as much when I, well, you know it's funny when i edit i actually think in, in my head if i was sharing this with somebody <laughs> What would I tell them? But yeah, it's it's pretty close to the same pace. Yeah. Pretty close. Nice, nice. So what now these are just just in, just a, just a, I'm trying to see what your metadata is for that. That camera was a what? What did you shoot that with? And, and what camera and lens? This one. Uh, this is Nikon, the D5. Nikon D5. Yeah. Okay. One twenty. One twenty millimeter. Okay, got it. Yeah, yeah. Probably the macro. Now the macros, yeah, the macros 120. No, it's a 24 to 120, it says right here. Oh, the 24 to 120. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Good thing I saw like somebody else would have. <laughs> yep. Yes, they would have. <laughs> <laughs> They're always looking out for us, man. That's cool. Mm -hmm. 
so this is what Margie's done. She has sorted these images for me. And I've simplified this a little bit for you guys, just so you don't have to look at 500 images. But I like black and white. I like color. I like to show sepia. My favorite is the special. The special means I can do whatever I want to them. I can tweak them, contrasty, edgy, whatever. It's Troy's fun edits. And the cool thing is, is my clients love it. They see it all the time. It's different than what everybody else is doing. And you again, know. this is Margie said, these, this series of images are, need to have Troy's special sauce added to them or special, mm -hmm. the special mm -hmm. treatment. She made that decision in her pre-culling process, right? She did. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Do you guys ever, do you guys ever, you know, have a difference of opinion on images that should be, you know, processed a certain way versus another? Of course. Yeah. I mean, but that's all right because I can override all of those because I'm editing. So. <laughs> you know, she's going to hear this, right? If she's not oh, listening yeah, yeah, right yeah. now. <laughs> yeah, she knows. She knows. And that's fine. I mean, look, it's, it's the difference between her and her relationship with an album in her mind me how I meant the shot to be so she may have put like this image in black and white but I may have meant it to be special so I'll just edit it the way I saw it she doesn't know what was in my mind when I was editing oh, right. or when I was shooting mm -hmm. um, and th this particular image is one of those kind of images that I shot it having a very specific look in mind yep so it it, it helps to have that when you're editing over just, oh, I just make it black and white randomly. Yeah. So now that they're in the folder, so if you ever do this and you have them in the folders and you want to quickly apply, just I select them all and then you go up here to save presets. I created a preset called defaults and I make those black and white. I go to my sepias, I do the same thing. I select them all, go to my defaults, I make them sepia. And my specials, I'm going to select everything. This is just what I do. Go through, boom, make them all special. And then I go back, select them all, and see how it's converting to black and white really quick. Yeah. You don't have to do that before you render smart previews. It, it, I don't see a huge performance. Oops, there you go. Let me go to develop. Here we go. All right, everybody strap in. The ride is about to begin. So this is what I do. I will go through the images. I will pop in and out. It's like this one. I'm adjusting the exposure for his face because I know I'm going to use a shortcut on my Shuttle Pro. I'm going to put a radio gradient in there, and I'm back. And I'm out. Go to the next one. Crop. I'm going to crop him, give him more center. Radio gradient. And I'm done. That's so, crazy how fast you do that. That is crazy. Yeah, it's it's great. It, it is great. So just to so recap, like, you go through, you have, so Margie made a bunch of selections and you put them in special. You go through, you select all of them and apply special to them and then go back over them and do specific cropping and whatever edits you need to do them, like vignetting, et cetera. Yep. Got it. Okay. Yep. That's it. I try very hard to get the best shot in camera. I don't think that... You know, software should never be a crutch. It should, it should, you know, assist in what you're doing. Do a radial gradient. And here I'll do several linear gradients in the side. And then, and then I'm out. So there are my focus is nice in the center. One thing to, to keep in mind with Lightroom is that whatever the last setting you use for that tool, it'll remember that. So I have a preset for my radio gradient called outer burn, and I've, turn down exposure, highlight, and shadow. That's really all I'm turning down. And the same thing for my linear gradient, it's the same. So when you pop in and out, whether it's a shortcut key or whatever, it's going to keep grabbing that exact same. So it's predictable what the effect is going to be. Got it. Yeah. As you're, as you're stepping through the selection, like in the beginning, you mentioned that you, you've got a lot of automation and hardware tools <laughs> dialed in to, to make this process a little bit more fluid. Um, do you do you find yourself reaching for the mouse at all or i mean i know when to draw gradients and stuff like that but like to to skip through the images are you just like okay i just this one only needed a couple of tweaks here and there and then you hit a hot key to go to the next image and then it's on or are you mousing through them no i i never use the mouse or i don't i don't have a mouse but i have a touchpad oh, and right. i have a wacom tablet so i'm not i mean 
literally a lot of the images are all done with my left hand. I'm, I'm adjusting the exposure and I go to the next image if I want. If I need to do something more like this particular image, I had a, had a vision in mind for this image, then I'll come in with the tablet and I'm gonna, I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna make some adjustments. I'm gonna be like, okay, I wanted the, the shadows a little bit darker and I wanted this a little bit more moody and we'll bring the clarity down because I wanna soften it up a little bit. And we can go, let's here, let's go down to effects. Adobe, if you're watching, please put dehaze up here by <laughs> clarity, please. Please don't hide it. One line of code. I, you know what? I just let me drag it up there. Let me arrange all this stuff the way I want. Yeah, there you go. All the, that'd be nice. All the other editors allow you to do that pretty much. Right, right. So yeah, so this this image I had a I had a an idea of what I wanted it to be. So yeah, I'll tweak it a little bit more. That's gorgeous, man. That is really gorgeous. Thank you. This one I meant to show you the raw, but apparently I'm showing you the PSD. So, <laughs> oh. which is I removed the air conditioner. There's a big air conditioner right here. Um, oh, and you but took I that shot out. it. Oh wow. Yeah, I, I took it out. I wouldn't normally do a lot of Photoshop work, but in this case, because the air conditioner was right here um, and I couldn't, the room was very tiny. I took it out. So I'll do that for them. I'll do that for the for the couple because they don't need to see that. Even if I said, "Oh, I'll take it out later." I just take it out now. It's not hard. Yeah. And they really enjoy that. And it makes their experience when they're watching the images just so much greater. And you see that, like in the case of the one that shot with the air conditioner in there, you when you shot it, you knew that, you know what, I'm going to take that out later. I did. And I, and I made I made every effort to work around it. I wasn't just lazy. You know, I'm not like, oh, I'll just Photoshop it. Yeah. Um, I made every effort. This is him getting his new watch, by the way. So, same, yeah. So same here. Did this one have the? This had the air conditioner in there as well. Yeah, um, I took it out. PSD. Nice. See, apparently I grabbed the wrong file. Yeah, no. <laughs> just barely good. came in. Just barely. But you know, she'll appreciate that, and that's that's what I'm there for. I'm there. And for you her. took you took that out with with Photoshop. You didn't just clone did. it out with Lightroom, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. You, anytime you got to push those big pixels, I do all that stuff in uh, in Photoshop. Nice. So I'm just cropping. I'm just cropping, moving it around, looking at what I want to do. I want to increase the contrast or bring the blacks down. I don't ever touch the contrast slider. I don't I don't like that slider. It moves too many things. The contrast slider? Really? Okay. Yeah, the contrast slider. Look, if we reset this. Oops, we went back too far. Oh, we went back too far. Let me reset the exposures and the highlights and blacks and stuff. So if I just slide the contrast slider, look what it did to the highlights. It killed my highlights. Yeah. It, it blew them out. Well, I adjust exposures based on highlights. So this is just how I see in my head. I adjust her to her face and her skin tone eh, about right there and the highlights, right? But the blacks are a little over. No problem. I'll just grab the blacks. So I've made contrast because... Yeah. Contrast is just the difference between the highlights and the and the shadows, or the darkest and the lightest. Right, right. Yeah, the the contrast slider is more like a a sledgehammer, right? <laughs> it is a little bit. I mean, yeah, it's rarely useful to me. Mm -hmm. So it just it's all in your workflow. Yeah. If you could, would you hide it? Yeah, yes, I would turn <laughs> that sucker off, man. Here you go. Another tip. This is one of my. This is one of my favorite things of their day is their rings. Oh, look at that. Look at that. There's precious. Yeah. yeah. They're, you know what? They're, they're huge. Uh, well, they, they, they're huge uh, Lord of the Rings fans. She may be a little bit more than him, um, but they're both very nerdy. So yeah, they love Lord of the Rings. So I think she's got Elvin on there. I thought it was super cool. I love it. Well, at least she, well, she could have taken it all the way and put on some ears, right? <laughs> <laughs> He got married with little ears sticking up out of the veil. That would have been interesting. Yeah. Oh, that could have been cool. Yeah. Uh -huh. Very themed. But this is, you know, this is just one of those little detail shots. And and what I would do is, is I would get the exposure roughly on the on the rings. And then I would come in and I would put a little radio gradient in there. Radio gradients are my favorite. I mean, yeah. the whole thing is all about, you know, focusing attention. And I notice your your eyeball in this. Are you? Do you ever like? I know some photographers rely on the histogram in Lightroom. You don't. You don't rely on that at all. I don't rely on that because 
histograms lie. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you if you look at an image like this and I rely on the histogram, it's telling me that I'm not getting a good exposure because right. I've got all my exposure buried, you know, to the to the shadows. But I only care about the dress. Yeah. So yeah. It, it, the histograms have their place, just not for me and not where I work. I I don't use them. I don't think that they help me at all. Um, what about when you're shooting? Do you keep one up on the screen at all when you're, when no, you're actually making the exposure? No. 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 Uh, um, what I what I would say is, is whatever tool works best for you to get to nail the image. I think for me, the best thing is, is to learn your camera is when I point my camera at this subject, I know her dress is going to overexpose probably three quarters of a stop. That's just how the camera is going to see it mm -hmm. because the camera is going to see all that dark area around her. Her dress is white. It's in the sun. I don't even need to point the camera at it. I automatically grab my camera and I roll down the exposure. Let me yeah. see if I was, let me see if I was, no, it doesn't, it doesn't show me if I did negative exposure, but I probably did. I probably rolled it down um, because that's just, that's how I shoot all day. So wow. I don't look at histograms. They just, they scare me. That is beautiful these shots are crazy you know and seeing them in the grid in g view um they uh you know it it just automatically looks like they're ready to go into an album <laughs> I just can't. they're pretty close and i and i think that uh it's important that we strive to get as much in camera as possible because if you rely on the software then your work becomes sloppy and sometimes we have to rely on the software Mm -hmm. right like like well first of all this scene i mean i looked up and this was the first time she could see his face because he was under a tent mm -hmm. and as she walked down more of him was revealed so there was no time for me to think about um much more than capturing the moment and then if i had to i knew in software later i could i could tune it up um and, and just are like you in focus wise, so you're shooting, I think you mentioned you're shooting aperture priority, but are you in autofocus or are you manual focusing? I'm all autofocus. Auto yeah. Yeah. It's so interesting. Only... Robert Evans last week was, he shoots all manual um, and manual focus as well using focus peaking. So, you know, and what, what I know, obviously, the way you work is subjective. Would you ever find yourself working like that and just shooting all in all manual and manual exposure or manual focusing as well? Mm -mm. No, it's not. It's not fast enough for me. Mm. Um, I, I can turn and I can turn to her and go click and turn to him and go click and I'm done. I got the shots. Yeah. And yes, if you're proficient, you can be that fast manually. But that that is somebody who is. Uh, highly skilled and tuned that uh, ability far beyond just somebody going, Oh, I'm going to shoot manual. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's like our friend, uh, Steve Brazel mm -hmm. who shoots concerts. He changes exposures manually the whole time. I don't know how the heck he does that. It yeah. would kill. I would miss every shot. Yeah. That's but why that's, he does what he does. Right. Cause he yeah, can but do that's, that. Yeah. 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 So I guess it's, it's important for anybody that is considering one way or the other do what works for you but get good at it mm -hmm. you know i know when my camera's at my side and i go to pull my camera up i am already centering the focus point by hitting a button when i lift it up i know exactly where i'm going to put it i hold the button down it focuses and fires before i can even think that's how i work yeah yeah it's just yeah i think mean, you hit it right on the head that's how you work so there's like the you could you can invest your effort in building up the muscle memory to to utilize the computer and the technology to its fullest, um, or if you don't want to do that, which is perfectly valid, you can turn all that off and go manual and get yeah. really good at nailing focus manually and and nailing exposure, so you understand what if you intrinsically understand what your scene is is. And you can do it, like you said, in a split second. You're like, oh, yeah, you know, I know that this background is blown out, so I want to do this, this, and this. That means this exposure. And then do the focusing and have it all nailed before the decisive moment escapes you. That's something completely different. That's a whole new level of, of uh, yeah. you know, fine-tuning your brain. Right? Yeah, but, I, but I, will, I will stand my ground and tell you and tell anybody there is no 
best way. Yeah. It's, it's, it's legitimately whatever is best for you. Take what other people share and, and, you know, bring it into context and use it for what's good for you. Yeah. There is no best way. There's always you know? going to be, especially in this this industry. I mean, I don't know many other industries, but in this industry, there's always the the debate. There's always a debate going on. Like back in the day, it was, uh, what was it? Uh, God, if you go way far back, it was photo photographs versus paintings. Which one is real art, right? And then it was right, black right. and white versus color, and then slide film, and then raw versus JPEG, Nikon versus Canon. Uh, you know, it, it just goes on and on. There's always the or. Um, when my argument is it doesn't necessarily need to be an or like you're saying it could be an and and even if it is an or your or could be different than my or and who are you to say that mine is wrong oh, because absolutely. it doesn't fit with the way your brain is wired right yeah I, I i have a very good friend of mine that works for canon and and him and, and i'm very much a uh nikon first sony near second you know i love them both and so people are always ask us you know oh, what camera should i buy i'm looking at a new system and it's like, what one feels good in your hand? What mm -hmm. one are you excited about? What, you know, go play with one and try one. Yeah, it's like um, it's like asking someone to tell you which car should you buy. You know, it's like it yeah, depends well, on what you want to use it for, how much you have to spend, your level of, you know, there's too many variables to give one blanket. Oh, go buy this, you know, go buy a Tesla, you know. Who care? You know, you don't know. You don't know what they're going to be doing or what their skill level is or budget or no, any of that stuff. No, you don't know. No. So it's, it's very confusing. It can be very confusing. I, my, my motto is, is wait until you need a thing and you'll know what that thing is. Mm -hmm. um, because, you know, let's say I'm just going to keep editing here. So, you no, I'm loving of, it. I love it. Very it's repetitive. Cool. It's the same. It's the same routine. Um, you know, it's, uh, what was I going to say? I lost my train of thought. Um, you were going to say that you were asking me for my bank account number so you could wire a million dollars. Something just along those lines. How short of attention span we have. Like, hey, hey, you give me the football, I'm going to run with it. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's awful. No, we're just going to go right on to editing. Yeah, yeah. No, I keep, I keep, I keep interrupting your train of thought. Anyway, no, this is this is really good. No, I'm just sort of. And when you're doing this, when you're when you're like actually working on a series of images without being recorded like this, you are. What's your environment like? You got your got your tea there. You got your your music thumping in the background. Like what what's yep. You have a specific time of day that you like to do it. Like some people like to edit in the middle of the night or in the morning. What's your what's your you know, flavor? I edit whenever it suits me. It's it's weird. It's I'm not a I'm not a huge fan of editing uh, early in the morning or early in the day. So for me, it's mostly later in the evening. You know, I I enjoy being outside. So I usually go do all my outside stuff. Go shoot. Go play. Go work in the yard. And then when that's all done, then I come in and do software. Cause then I can be at the desk. Yeah. So, so for, you know, like for a shot like this, when I shot this image, I knew exactly what I was going to edit it to look like. Um, and I knew that it was going to be underexposed like so, or it was going to be darker. So I'm exposing for his face. So if we reset this bad boy, you can see it's a little overexposed. Margie's over here on the left with a strobe sitting on a ladder and, uh, you know, just very quickly because I know what I want this image to look like. Oh, so this one was with a strobe on this one. Yeah. Um, I use a strobe a fair amount to accompany natural light. I'm not, a, I don't use it all the time. I don't carry light stands. I don't carry reflectors. I don't carry any of that stuff. I only use speed lights. So in this case, I wanted to create a dramatic look, which I did several times. Um, and the speed light's perfect. I can underexpose the sky. I can bring that down, throw a little light in him, and then it looks great. These guys are all natural light, just natural light, just natural light. It's funny the parallels that Robert Evans and I have. I was listening to him this morning, and we both started with Hasselblads and learned to see light and EV exposures in our head. And mm -hmm. 
you go in and you and you know what you're going to shoot. You already got it figured out. Um, the way we edit, starting in Photo Mechanic and ripping through our images, and yeah. it's just it's so it's so cool. Natural light is my is my best friend. I don't like to bring in a lot of light unless it's something to be dramatic. Yeah, yeah. No, in that you mentioned the photo mechanic part of it, right? So back to the workflow. Who is doing the initial cull in photo mechanic? Is it you? You go through your images and pull out the shots of you know out of focus and clearly um, the clearly not good shots, and then you give that batch to Margie. She does that that sort and then gives them back to you, and then you do what we're doing right now. Is that the general flow? No, what she does is she gets every file. Mm. So then she goes through and eliminates all the duplicates, all the bad ones, picks the best of the best, then sorts them into the proper folders. Oh, okay. So she starts as a beginning, beginning. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And then she starts at the very beginning and then brings them back. So an image like, an image like this, which is a very casual shot, if they were to put this in their album, if, he was to, if they were to order this one and say, you know, we want to put this in, I would come in and clean this up. I don't do it ahead of time unless it's dramatic like the air conditioner, mm -hmm. but I would remove like this little box and these things over here under, under his left hand and, you know, maybe the grass and the little sparkle there. I would do that for the album because it's easy to do. It's impressive. It makes their work, you know, it makes my work look really good to them and makes them remember the day as, as best as possible. That's what we want. We want them to have, you know, a good remembrance of that day through our photos. Yeah. And, and you mentioned the album. So when, you know, just trying to get my brain around the, 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 the process flow of building that album. So do you go through, like, what, what's your process like for presenting the images to the client? Or do you build, I know a lot of photographers will go through what you're doing and then upload to, say, Smug Mug or Pixie Set or some site like that and allow the the bride and the groom to sit down at their house or on their phone or on their computer, wherever, and make their selects and favorites. And then you take those and build the album from them. Is that how your flow goes? No, actually our stuff is, is very different. We've, we've sort of brought a lot of our traditions and sort of a lot of our techniques from when we were shooting film. Cause it, first of all, people are tactile. People like to touch and feel things. It's, it's really important. So we print everything. We proof four by sixes, of everything and that's what we give to our client when they come over they get to pick up those proofs they look through them they hold them they love them they take them home they go through them they pick out margie usually tells them about their hundred favorites and then they schedule an appointment and they come back and they build the album with margie in person page by page so that they get a perfect book built for their story the way they want it. Not and do you the have, way you have mats and, and all those like sample sample album covers and mats. You can say, oh, this this might be look might look good like this. And you know, how do you in other words, how do you show them if you're building you're sitting down or Margie's sitting down with them and building an album, how does she visually represent what that album or page or pages are gonna look like? You know, Pikachu. people are smart. People are smart and they have an imagination and they get it. And so Margie literally builds everything in a paper book. She draws pictures. We're going to put it up. We're going to put a picture here. We're going to put a picture here. We're going to map this one here. We have sample albums they can look at and go, oh, that's what a, a full panel looks like. Or, oh, you know, they've seen what the book looks like that they're going to get. But that's it. It's it's that simple. We still use loops for them to look at the proofs and go, okay, make sure this is the one you want. Make sure your eyes are open and you're happy with that one. Yeah. That's um, cool. It's very tactile and they're very involved. It's very visceral. They have a very you know strong connection to um, the whole process. It's amazing. That, it's really you know what? That is, and it's brilliant too, because in a world that is increasingly digital and impersonal to add a little bit more of, of personal and craftsmanship, and personal contact back into the flow. I think that's, that's uh, you know, that sets yourself apart. It's kind of like, you know, everyone's getting emails and inundated with emails and, and messages and all this stuff all day long. And then you just sit down and you handwrite a letter to someone. <laughs> right? 
<laughs> right. Well, you know, it's it's true. I mean, you know, I have a my cousin's in marketing and she does postcard marketing and I was teasing her and she says, but you know, the the return on postcard marketing is greater than any other form of marketing, just about mm. the physical mm. piece in their hand. Mm -hmm. And you know, you take a you take a mother of of a of a newborn baby and you go do a baby shoot and you print those proofs for her and you put them in front of her and you let her hold them and thumb through them it's 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 so tactile and me, that that's her baby she's going to hold those things close to her and when Margie's doing an album build with a with a mother or a bride or anything there's these images that they tend to gravitate to and you can tell like this image is really important to them um, you can't get that digitally. You just can't. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for me, I photograph to tell a story, to display my art, to connect with a person. And if I can't connect, then then to me, there's a void there. I've kind of failed. So, I wonder if that kind of mindset would work for other genres of photography, like models, you know, instead of doing, you know, the same flow that I mentioned earlier, where you shoot a model and you put all the images on a, on a website, they go through them, you know, yada, yada, yada. Um, if you were to do what you're doing and print out four by sixes or five by sevens and sit down and go through with them, you know, this is what this shot, this is what I was thinking and, you know, go that direction. I wonder if, if it's time for a sort of, sort of a renaissance of getting back to the old world of photography combined with all the pleasures and the, the ease of use of the new. Well, I can tell you that if I was to shoot models or I, if I was to do corporate headshots or whatever, I would absolutely print them. Um, and, and show them in person. I don't think that digital presentations work all the time. I think there's a lot of people who have made it successful. Therefore, they've gained credibility there. And I'm not saying it's not credible, but it doesn't make the proofing any less successful. Um, it just depends on, on what you're doing. My, my the analogy volume, is always, right? The volume too. Right. Well, it depends on what you're doing. Yeah, I do 30 weddings a year. You know, I'm not, okay. I'm not photographing, you know, 500 seniors or a thousand seniors or 5,000 seniors. Like right. that would be, or sports or, you know, commercial jobs or, you know, there's, there's a place for it. There's definitely a place for it. But my, my favorite analogies always come down to food, right? Imagine, imagine you walk into a restaurant and it's, it's tough to look at a menu, just words. But if there's pictures like, oh, do I do the burger or do I do you know, this, and then all, it's always good to have somebody come in and go, oh, you know, we make the best burgers, you know, and okay, that, that sort of visceral connection, the hum, human contact, the tactile experience, that really helps. It's so hard to just not know. But, uh, but some photographers, so the, the next level back from that is, you know, the, the online, using the internet and online services to, to proof is one thing, right? But then there's some people, um, like Dan Ablin, he's a photographer out of Chicago. He, he used to have a brick and mortar studio. I think he, he got rid of it, but he used to tell me that, you know, they had this beautiful studio with a dialed in kind of proofing room with a plush couch and wine and you know, and, and giant prints everywhere so people could visualize what a giant print looked like and all this stuff. And then it is whole flow where they, they sit the sit the bride and groom down or the newly the newlyweds down and project on the wall big the the image with the idea that they need to see it big if they're gonna buy big. So you don't you don't subscribe to that? I don't, no. And the reason is is because um people well, let me qualify this. My clientele, the clientele that I deal with, and there's different levels of clients for each photographer. So it's important to understand that the people that I deal with, I have an understanding. Well, I, I get them. Like we get each other. And that, that matters. That matters a lot. Uh, these people, they don't live in chateaus and mansions where they all have big wall space. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't make any sense for me to try to sell them a 40 inch print because they may not have room for that. Right. Right. So what we do is we have we have some wall samples. They're on my wall. We walk them into the other room, which is my living room. We do it all in my home because that's contextual that they, they have a real house. I have a real house. So they walk over to my wall and Margie says, yeah, do you have this much room on your wall? Oh, yeah, we got about that much room. She's like, OK, well, we could do a portrait this size here. And they go, oh, I like that size. Mm. And they look. 
clients are smart. They don't, they don't need to see their photo at 60 inches projected in a fake TV or a frame to get an understanding of that's what it's going to look like. Yeah. Now I, I say that in my universe, right? Not everybody right. else's. Right. Right. Uh, but for me, you don't need to do that. Try something different, more personal. That's really cool. And you, what about what about space for proofing? Do you have a dedicated space that's designed to make the bride and groom newlyweds feel comfortable, or is it just hey, come on in, sit in it's my couch? Know. Nice, I love I it. Sit on my couch. Yeah, sit on my couch. I got a custom. I built a table. Yeah, they hang out. They have they have a water or a tea or a soda and a, and a plate of cookies, and it's it's super casual. It's super personable, and that works for me. That's, that's fantastic, man. That is really cool. I love it. That's refreshing. It's refreshing to see the, the, the yeah. less than digital approach. Um, well, what's, in, what's important to understand for anybody is that find your own way. Nobody's way is the right way. My way, whoever else is, they're all different. They've all figured it out differently. Be a pioneer for your way. Mm -hmm. So I paused on this image just for a second because... Um, when I come to an image like this that I, I had in my mind that I wanted to edit a little bit more, I'll spend a little more time. I'll throw in a little more gradients. I'll get a little more picky. You know, if I don't like the, if I don't like this, this, the window up here, I might burn it down a little bit more, you know, little things like, so I'll spend a little more time on it. Cause to me, this is like a show piece. Mm -hmm. for her right like it really makes her look good it's a really cool shot and then and then i move on to the normal tchotchke stuff and just crop and move crop and move crop and move and how does this how does this i know you 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 know as we've learned from our the twit pro critique sessions you know your way around an image in terms of what would work and what wouldn't work competition wise like when you're going through your images, do you do you flag ones? You're like, okay, this one might work for a WPPI con con competition. Let me set that aside. And if you do that, do you what do you do to it? Like, do you you keep it with this kind of quick edit, or do you go in and kind of pixel peep all the way down to the eyelash level? No, I never pixel peep for that. I literally look at the image and go, yeah, it's got possibilities because you never know until you start tuning it up. And when you start getting images into competition, um, you, man, you got to, you got to scrutinize every single little micro detail. Mm -hmm. So what I'll usually do is I'll go to the library and under uh, keywording, I'll throw a keyword in there um, called image comp. And I have a, I have tons of collections over here, tons of collections. I've created lots of smart collections and I have an image comp folder and it will appear in here under like five star image comp will appear in there. And those are potentials. Those are images that I might consider for image comp. So when I'm looking for something, I'll come in here and go, uh, maybe I should try one of these or no, I don't like those. <laughs> you know, I just, I just go through and they end up in here. So, okay. Okay. And then, and then when you just edit those whenever you feel like it and I do. Yeah. Whenever I'm putting something together for image comp or, you know, then there's like weird ass stuff like this, which I maybe don't even have any idea what I was trying to do. See, I dropped, I dropped sky in and it didn't work. <laughs> 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 That's a running joke, ladies and gentlemen. Troy and his Troy and his inability to <laughs> or now you have ability to do skies really well, but <laughs> yeah. but you know what? I'm okay with like a fantasy sky. Yeah, but that's what I do. When I come across something, I'll tag it and I'll throw it in there. That's a that's a scene from Ghostbusters. That's what that looks like. Yeah, yeah, no, I like that. I like that scene. So, like, here we'll go. So these are my sepias. The cool thing about like sepia and uh, black and white and special is is you don't have the skin tone to worry about as much. You just got to really sort of worry about like they're doing shots of tequila at the end. <laughs> What is that song? I can't remember their song. There's a song in there where it says, you know, when we do shots of tequila. So they did that at the end. It was awesome. Uh, that what a great wedding. Wow. Oh yeah. They're they're just they're awesome. They're like they're like my friends now. We they came over for pizza and they picked up their proofs and we sat and talked for hours and it's awesome. That's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah. I bet you have some horror stories and some great stories. Like 
you because you've photographed thousands and thousands of weddings, right? Um, I photographed a lot. I don't know. It's been into the thousands. I do about 30, a, 30 or 40 a year. I've been doing that for about 25 years. So yeah, that's a lot of I money. don't do a huge, I don't do a huge number. And you know, to be honest, um, my couples are usually really, really focused on photography. I mean, I am their budget a lot of times. And so they give me a lot of attention and we go shoot. I'm only there six to eight hours and then I'm out. So I'm not there for the crazy parties and nobody, my clients don't want shots of that. Yeah. They don't, they don't need that. They're not going to put it in their album. So, you know, their friends, there's cell phones everywhere, man. They can take pictures of, of somebody doing headstands on the table. I don't need to do that. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, as part of your package, are you, what's included? Are you doing a bridal engagement shoot and, and yeah, we always do an engagement session that's required. Okay. Uh, that's just so that they can get, you know, get to know crazy Troy. And why is he having me stand on tables and chairs and climb trees and do crazy stuff? Mm-hmm. Um, and it gets me and I get to learn their personality and get them comfortable. A lot of people are really nervous about being photographed. You know, yeah. if you're if you're a new photographer, go be a subject for another photographer. Mm-hmm. And most people are like, Oh, no, no, I don't like to be on that side of the camera. Well, then, if you, you got to be able to relate to your couples, man, yeah. they're uncomfortable. So the engagement and, and session, so because it's going to be on, on one of the most important days of their lives. And I mean, you know, empathy would state that, you know, people that are nervous about having their picture taken aren't necessarily nervous about the act of having the picture taken. It's the not knowing of who's going to look at them in the future. <laughs> right. right and a lot of you know i've actually had a lot of couples come to me and go okay i really hope you can help me with the posing because i don't even know how to pose and i'm like why would you think you have to pose that's my job don't you worry about that mm-hmm. oh great and they don't know they're just nervous they want to do good they 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 want to choose good they want to you know you just take care of them you just walk them through and then you yeah. get guys like nick who's just comfortable in front of the camera and he's great to photograph just him and his ninja. See, there was another ninja. I put his ninja in there. Oh, nice. I didn't even notice it. Look at that. He would notice that. I didn't notice that. He probably noticed that, yeah. So these are my specials. So Margie picks these for something that that may lend itself to be a little more edgy. Um, it's okay if they're tilted a little bit. I, I tend to play with a little bit more clarity. Um, I tend to play with a little bit more dehaze because it makes them a little bit more crunchy, which I like a lot. Um, I'll do dodging and burning a little bit heavier through my radio gradients and my linear gradients. I'll just, you know, block those sides. And that's, to me, that's a killer image right there. Yeah. Is she, when she's sorting these like into special, et cetera, et cetera, is she, um, when you, when you present or when she presents these to the, to the newlyweds, are they separated like that into, okay, these are the specials. These are the sepia. These are, or do no. you, you put them in more of a storytelling? Chronology? Yeah, they're in, they're in a, a timeline, you know, okay. like the way that the story is told. So you'll get a special next to a black and white, next to a color. Okay, gotcha, um, gotcha. And probably, uh, probably sixty percent of all the images are in color, mm-hmm. um, but but ironically, and I think we do that because it it it's easier to digest in them in color and it's easier for family, especially mom and dads and stuff to really get into the color. Um, but most of the brides and the, the couples will order mostly specials and some black and white. Yeah. They really like, they really like that, that look. Mm-hmm. And I try not to go crazy with the special. I try not to go way off base with yeah. color. I try to keep it, you know, nice and toned. So this image I knew that I wanted to have more of a blown out look in the background and I wanted the inside to be dark. So I'll do a heavy, I'll do a heavy gradient. Uh, maybe not. Maybe I'll just pull down the whites. Yeah. The whites and the shadows. Yeah. It's a little better. I don't like what the exposure slider does because it brings on everything. And then um, I'll just bring in a couple linear at the top. There we go. And something like that, something in that area. Yeah. Classic. And once you apply all those linear or radio gradients, you can always unapply them vert universally by going back into the overall 
opening the shadows a little bit. So, and just a note on the linear and radial gradients, it remembers the last tool that you used. So I have a preset called outer burn that I pull down exposure, highlight and shadow. Mm -hmm. And I do the same thing on my linears. So when I'm using my shortcut keys on my shuttle pro, they're always there. So when I go in I know exactly how much that radio gradient is going to be by default, my linears are going to be the same. This is one thing that I can't do in capture one and it kills me because I love capture one. I can't do the linear and radio gradients on the fly like this. They just, it doesn't have a way to support it and it just kills me. Mm. Hey, Cause there's always as, the next version, right? Well, yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm filling out a survey form right now and I'm hoping there's like a comment section. I can put it in there and go, please, please. Cause I really like capture one too. I use that for my personal stuff. We'll, we'll play with that in a minute. So but this is, this is how I edit a wedding. I wish that there was more magic and secret formulas and stuff. That's pretty magical to me. I mean, I'm just like in <laughs> awe watching you go, we'll step through these. See this little little box over here in the lower left? Mm -hmm. I, I, you know, I'm not going to touch it on the wedding day, but and I can't really crop it out. But if it goes in the album, they don't even have to ask. I'll just take it out. Yeah. Chances are they won't even think to ask me, but I'll take it out because... I don't want one of their wedding party or family or them years later to look at that and go, what is that? Yeah. That's like, who, a, that's who like, shot oh, this I'll... wedding? Who shot this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> who are you? Uh, who are you? So uh, two questions. I, I made a book mental bookmark to rem ask you these questions. Um, but when you're printing your proofs, are you guys doing those to your, yourselves? Are you, are you printing those at home on a printer or do you send them out to Miller's or White House or somebody like that? I use Miller's. Okay. Yeah, so I send everything to Miller's. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're amazing. And um, I, don't, I, don't, I don't wanna do that stuff myself. It's a nightmare. Yeah. What if it crashes? What if it goes wrong? You know, I, mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't wanna deal with it. Yeah, trust me, I know about crashes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you. I'm glad you picked up on that little subtlety there. I can even. I can even though I'm not looking at your face right now, I can see your face. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm grinning. I'm grinning. Yeah. What about the? Is does Miller's do the albums as well? You have a different company for that. No, I use I use Zookbinder for the albums. Oh, There's, Zookbinder. Oh yeah. yeah. Okay. Zook. Yeah. Um, Mark, the owner over there, is amazing. Those two, Mark and oh gosh, she's gonna kill me. Sherry, is it Sherry? Man, I feel bad. I wish I could remember both their names. Um, they're amazing humans, man. They are just, you know, running a business, you need people that are going to support you yeah. and it's stand behind you. And when there's a problem or you made a mistake or they made a mistake or whatever, you need to know that they're going to look out and get it done. And these guys just, they just rock it every single time. They're so good. That's Same cool. with Miller. I, I hear that bond. I hear that bond between photographers and their album company and their lab, and you know, and it's it's that because they're they're part of your entourage or your team, and their job is to make you look good so that you can look good in front of oh, the yeah. client. Like Robert, oh, yeah. Robert uses um, Couture Book as his album company. I'm not sure who he uses for his lab, but yeah, they make they make beautiful books. There's there's no doubt. Um, you know, it, it's it's for me. It's more about the service and w it, will, will they be there for you to help it than, than it is what is the actual product. Yeah. I'm not a big fan of niche products. I'm not a big fan of acrylic covers and I'm more traditional. I have, we have leather covers and you know, matted albums and things like that. But it's, it's much more about will this company take care of me? Are they going to jack the price up on me? Are they going to ignore my phone call when I have a, you know, a crisis? Are they going to get stuff out? on time on time yeah and that's I know the thing about miller's is during the holidays miller's send miller's is faster during the christmas season than they are any other time of the year because hmm. they gear up for it yeah now you um you and i were chatting the other day and i know uh, i saw on twip pro that you had an incident where you lost a drone <laughs> 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 so uh you know oh that is just cruel uh, i'm just wondering i'm not seeing any drone shots in here are you uh, are you planning on adding aerial photography to your to oh your lineup my gosh. 
No. When no, when I you do not. manage to get another drone that that is uh, object de- that is object detection and awareness. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, I, I, my drone is, is, is strictly for personal use okay. it's for my personal, you know, fine art and landscapey stuff. Um, I have no desire to fly a drone on a wedding day. There's too much going on for me. I will leave that up to the, um, the videographers, if you like, if they want to, if they want to fly a drone, they can, they can have it. I, I don't want to do that. There's too much stuff for me to do on that day. Yeah. Yeah. So very cool. And ultimately, you know, it's one or two shots. It's not a make or break the day kind of thing. And it takes more time to get that one or two shots than it's worth. Now, I say that today. Yeah. (laughs) But, you know, who knows? I may be doing a shot at a golf course in a cool place that lets me do whatever I want. Um, I may may pull the drone out if I have time. You know, if you schedule it and be like, hey, let's do a drone shot on the bridge at Eagle Glen Golf Club, you know. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm down. I'm going to so, make a prediction. I'm going to predict by, what are we in mid-2018 almost now? I'm going to predict by, uh, I'll be conservative with it, by 2020. 2020, you're going to be both feet into the drone world and it's, you're going to be, we'll be doing a watch me work session and I'm going to see some aerials show up in here. <laughs> Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right. See, now you're not, you'll not get one just to spite me. <laughs> no, no. I, I mean, you know, it, it, it'll show up. It'll definitely show up in some. It's not going to be a uh, permanent thing, but it might show up in some, you know, yeah. on a rare occasion if I can, if I can squeeze it in. Uh, we do have a golf course that's, that's uh, very close by Eagle Glen and they're very gracious in giving me some latitude on the golf club and we do have a wedding coming up where there will be no golfers on the golf club because being rented for the entire day by one particular company Mm -hmm. and we just so happen to align our time on the golf course when all the golfers are in the club so -hmm. there's literally no humans on the golf course so we can go anywhere we want shoot anything we want and that's drone time that is drone time yeah. yeah i may do that but that's that really doesn't happen very often and it's got to be a cool shot so i got to figure it out so yeah but now that you've made me mention it now i'm going to be asked now people are going to be like um so how was that uh how was that drone shot? <laughs> exactly exactly uh, well you got to get a drone first but so first things first one that works yeah oh my gosh <laughs> don't drop your drone out of a tree no. i know no. Well, let's uh, let's get through this because we're 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 at about an hour sure. now, so we want to yep. wrap this well, up. Well, I'm I'm going to wrap it up here real quick. So once I've finished editing everything, as you saw me edit that, I will select all the images. I will right click and I will export in the various types of uh, presets that I've created for my exports, depending on what I need to do. I do have one called uh, output for batching, so I output that and then. I have a very sophisticated batching mechanism that I run through Photoshop that puts borders on it and sizes it for the lab and everything. And then I send those off and they print them and then proofs come back. And all these, the, the presets, like your special preset and your output presets, all those things, where, Mm -hmm. where are those available online for people to purchase and download? Um, (laughs) they're not. (laughs) And why not? Why you do that to me? I'm just saying, spicy presets, you know, yeah. spicy presets. You know, it's a good idea. And it's, it's funny, my daughter was saying exactly the same thing to me the other day as I was going through my software class prep. She's like, you know, they're going to want these. I'm like, I'm not ready. You know, I've, I'm not ready. And, and I, would happily, I would happily sell them for almost nothing. And, and, you know, you saying that reminded me of when you did your interview with Martin Bailey and he was talking about, uh, what was the title of that one? Um, diversifying your income or something. Yes, exactly. And, and he's like, Oh yeah, I made this little preset for my printing and I've sold them a bunch. And I only charge a little bit. And I'm like, okay, all right. Um, yeah, I feel the tap on the shoulder. I do feel it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So thank you for that. I'm just telling you, you know, I mean, I'm looking at these and I would, I would absolutely buy them just after watching you do this. So <laughs> Well, good. Well, good. (laughs) 
All right. So now what I'm going to do is that's my Lightroom flow. It's it's that's as complicated as it gets for me. Um, I don't spend a lot of time diving in and out of these things, uh, playing with split toning and all that. That's very specific. Um, we could do a whole Lightroom course on getting into that kind of stuff. Just yeah. like to play with that. But what I will show you is I thought, well, we've done enough wedding stuff. Let's talk a little bit about like my personal workflow and some things that I really like. And I'll just grab one image in here and we'll just go through this. But this is uh, this is Capture One. And all of my personal work, my fine art work, everything I do for me goes through Capture One because it has a deeper, finer level of control. And as we all know, this yellow bridge in uh, Old Town Sacramento. Um, yes, that is Tower Bridge. Tower Bridge. God, I can never remember that. Yep. Um, it's Tower Bridge and, and it's literally gold. It's, it's brilliant and it's luminescent and it just doesn't come across very well uh, in the photograph. Uh, this was shot with an A7R Mark II. It's my travel camera. It's what I take when I go walk around. Um, but the cool thing about Capture One is this ability to select a color like so. You can do this in Lightroom. Okay, not a big deal. And you can affect like saturations and brightnesses and stuff like that. Eh, that's You can do that in Lightroom. It's not a big deal. But what you can't do is create a, lay, a mask. So now I've created a mask of just the bridge, right? So I'll go back to my editing tab here that I've created. And now I can bring up the exposure a little bit. I can bring up the brightness or whatever. Let's not mess that too much. The saturation, definitely a little bit. A little bit of clarity, I think, really makes that. Yeah, there we go. Maybe a little too much saturation. We don't want it to look fake. And now that's more what that bridge looks like in real life. That it's is very, beautiful. Yeah, it's very, it's very bright. It's amazingly bright bridge. I mean, you you can see it from space, I think. <laughs> Yes, you can. But I can create another, I can just go in, I can go, I can go back. I can pick a different color. So let's say I pick the sky. So there's my blue. I can go here and say anything that's black and white's not going to show up. So yeah, it's a pretty good selection. All right. Make me another, make me another layer. And I've and I've got some images that I've got 20, 30 layer. Well, that's a lot. I'm guessing well, maybe 20 layers. Um here we are in, on layer two, and you can name these if you like, but I can go into the sky now. I can increase the maybe a little clarity, a little saturation, and I can move the Kelvin temperature. Obviously, we can go too far and, you know, be like all flicker and stuff. But, right, right. Get but artistic. it gives me localized control that I just can't get with other software. And when I was in Hawaii... One of the things that I that I did is I sat and I played with these images over and over and over. And I finally realized like I'm getting the better image out of Capture One than I am out of Lightroom. Really? And when you say better, what do you mean? Better in what way? Um, it's 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 more to the vision that I had for the image, and I'm able to have more localized control in a way that I don't have to bring it into Photoshop to fix it. I can do it in the raw. So like I was out, I was out uh, photographing the waves on uh, KA beach shooting up the Nepali coast. Cause God, what an amazing place. Went there every morning. Um, and lo and behold, out in this insane surf, this guy shows up and he's boogie boarding. Um, his name is Travis. Uh, on, you can look him up on Instagram under trigger Trav. And uh, he's just living the dream, man. He lives in Hawaii. He's a professional boogie boarder or body surfer, whatever you call that. I'm really bad at that. Um, but anyway, he's out there and he's out there surfing this thing. And I'm like, oh, he's going to die. He's going to die. So I'm photographing him. Mm -hmm. um, it was amazing. But when, it, when I got back to the room, I'm looking at this stuff going, man, look at all that sand that's in there. I don't want all that brown. Well, I can't do anything about it, anything short of Photoshop, right? Well, in Capture One, I can grab that color. Let's make sure we grab the smoothness grabs like the radius of color, like the colors nearby. Yeah. And like, look, this is what it's grabbing. All right, so grab a little bit of that. And I'll just change the hue a little bit. 
And if I grab that same area one more time and I grab the hue again, because the hue only changes like 30 degrees and I can change the saturation a little bit. Now that brown is gone. And it's just affecting that one, those pixels that in that color range, right? Yep. Nice. Yep. See if I turn them on and turn them back off. I mean, it's, it's things like that. So my personal workflow is here. This is what I do for my personal stuff. I play, I just, I love, I just love the way Capture One works. I've created. God, you know, look at those the, waves, man. That's crazy. Oh, they were so big. This is, this is like 20 yards to his left. Wow. I, I couldn't, I'm shooting this and I'm watching him at the same time. Um, I've created all these presets in Capture One just for me. Or maybe I should put them on spicy yellow. So you can't, um, yeah, yeah. You can't move, um, you can't, it seems like you can't move as fast through Capture One as you can through with Lightroom, right? This is more of a, like you said, your fine artwork. You're going to sit there and work on it for a bit. You know, you can. You can actually move really fast through Capture One. You can. Where I'm hung up on, and if you're a Capture One genius and you can help me with this, is the linear gradients and the radio gradients. There's no super quick and easy way that I've found to do that because it's all it's all done in layers mm -hmm. and there's no, I just, I can't figure it out how to do it quick. So if I'm doing a shot of a portrait, I just want to put a quick vignette around their head. There's no easy way. And it's literally adds 30 minutes to a wedding and that 30 minutes matters. It does. Yeah. Yeah. But these, these things, I mean, they're just, these waves are insane. So here's here's a here's a question for you on the wedding workflow stuff. Um, sure, I had made a note to to ask you this. I forgot. So there has been this movement. I don't know if it's a movement or if it's an evolution or if it's a fad of uh, using album pre designed companies to take over the post processing, editing, culling, and album creation for the photographer. In other words, you send them, you know, you leave a wedding, throw everything on a on a hard drive or whatever media send it over to them or upload it to them and send it to them. And then they take it. They, they're, they actually act as the Margie. Now, do you, right. you've heard of these companies, obviously. What are, what's your opinion on them? They make me so sad. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, I, 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 I don't mean any disrespect to anybody. Um, but me, I'm an artist. I'm a creator. I can't imagine shooting a wedding for Nick and Brianna and having a vision of this shot of him standing up on this wall and sending it off to somebody else. And it's not gonna, it's not gonna be my vision. It's not my art when it's done. Mm -hmm. To me, to me, this is the other half of the creative process, mm -hmm. right? Like yeah. I put him there, I lit him, I knew how I wanted to light him, I knew what I wanted the shot to look like. And I have to finish it. I have to complete it yeah. for me. Yeah. Um, that's just, that's just my, that's just my two cents. I think that, uh, if you're already there and you can already do that, it's sort of like, if you understand the rules and you want to break the rules, that's fine. Just, I hesitate to say it this way, but don't be lazy and just have somebody else do it. Cause you don't want to, um, be better than that, learn how to do it and then make sure they do it to fit your vision so that you're not just another photographer out there that you actually have a unique style that somehow fits you. I want to get some photographers on that actually do that and get their perspective on it. You know, and what, what the, the mindset is, I wonder if it's, if it's to allow for scale, you know, if you're doing 150 weddings a year or something, you know, and that's the only way you can manage that level of volume is to offload some of it to someone else to, to handle that. Um, and then, sort of leave the market of high end artisan type stuff to the Troys of in the in the you know it's more what I do is more carriage trade. And to be fair, and I and I know and I know there's a lot of people out there and there's a lot of clients that aren't looking for me. Right. Right. I mean like I do 30 weddings. There's hundreds of thousands of weddings shot a year and there's there's companies that are shooting or doing 500 weddings a year and and more. And maybe their clients aren't interested. Maybe they just don't want all color. And they just want really nice shots and they want good documentary day, you know, photojournalistic kind of style. Perfect. Send it to those companies, the shoot dot edits of the world. Um, they're, they're perfect for that. You know, yeah. I, I worry 
about the new photographer that comes in and gets confused on which path to take because they saw somebody tell them that this is the way you should do it. I guess that's really where my, my direction is, is like, there is no right way. You know, there's many paths to, to, to completing your vision and don't get hung up in what one person says because they've got a hundred thousand followers, you know? Right. Right. No, absolutely. Absolutely. Those are some wise words, man. Very right. cool. Very cool. Let me figure out where is my screen sharing options. <laughs> it's it's disappeared i don't know where it is it's a oh there it is there we go that's cool man that was great thank you so much for doing that that was Yay. fantastic I'm, I'm very happy to share it's a glimpse into the world of of uh spicy jello and <laughs> <laughs> it's all in there it's all in there and you it's clear that you enjoy what you're doing and you've been doing this since you know for a while you know, what, right. 1,200 weddings or something like that. If you do anything 1,200 times, you better get good at it, you know, after a while. So that is really cool. What's what's next for you in terms of, like, trying to push things forward? I know you mentioned the F64 and the IPP, IEPPV stuff. And what's uh, what what keeps you excited and the, the spicy juices flowing? Um. I shoot every day. So I'm always shooting something every day, trying to, trying to just keep that creativity going. You know, it's, and it's your fault. I'm going to blame you for this. This whole, you know, webinar podcasting thing is very exciting. And I don't want to do what you're doing. I don't want to be another one of those guys, but I do have a couple associations and companies where I help mentor and I help lead people into that. And I think the idea of putting, education into a form that you can share with somebody and share with the masses, uh, whoever wants to see that is kind of cool. Yeah. Cause I'm used to doing it in person. I'm used to organizing classrooms where there's 25 people that sit in front of you and that's it. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. yeah. um, I'm doing a software class tonight. Uh, we've got like 30 people signed up for, we're doing it all, we're doing it all like this. And I'm excited about that. That's, that's pretty cool. That's cool. Um, as far as the shooting and stuff goes, Every wedding, I try to do a shot for me. One shot, just one photo. That's mine. Oh, look at so, that! Yeah, your little, yeah. your little personal Easter egg in every at every wedding, right? Yeah. Sometimes it's a macro of a of a candle, and sometimes it's a. I ask my bride, um, "Are you okay standing on the table over there?" <laughs> yeah. And usually they're like, "Yes, please put me on the table." Nice. Yeah. You ever do any of those trash the dress sessions? You remember that? No, no, I don't do any of those. Yeah, you remember that? That was that a fad, or is that still a thing? It's still kind of a thing. I mean, I've, uh, I've just never, I've never been into that. I think that uh, it wasn't. It's just not. It's just not my gig. It's not my style. It's not stuff I do. So yeah, cool. All right, man. Well, we'll leave it at that. I think uh, my computer has not crashed yet. Yay! <laughs> so, so let's get out of here before, <laughs> before it crashes. <laughs> we have to do it another time. So. Cool, man. So uh, spicyjello.com for your sure. commercial work and imageryconcepts.com for the wedding Perfect. stuff, right? Yep. Reach out to me if anybody has any questions. Um, you can also find me on twitpro.com. I'm there. I'm one of the one of the pros in there. So if you have questions and I'm always I'm always willing to help if I can. Awesome. All right, man. You have a good rest of your day. You too, sir. All right. Take care. Take care. This is Twitter.